to Celebrity Radio, it's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. Robin Windsor, of course, is the professional British Latin and ballroom dancing star who shot to fame on Strictly Come Dancing. We're going to talk to him today about a charity that's close to his heart, Hearts in Harmony. And also we'll find out about his DNA story. It's really lovely to talk to you. Robin, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Do you know, dancing is one of those things that I can't do. And I think to somebody who does it, you probably don't understand what the fuss is about. But it's such a thrill, isn't it, when you've got rhythm? That's something I've never had. Um, do you know what? Everybody's got rhythm. Well, nearly everybody's got rhythm. Um, it's something that you can't really teach. But all it is is hearing a beat in the music and being able to bounce to it at the right beat. And generally, most people can do it, especially if you've got a very good professional teacher teaching you what to do. Your life's been extraordinary. I guess this is something that you've been doing from birth, because you can't really learn it at 35 and start from there, can you? Well, I always say to all of my students, whenever they start, whether they're 8 or 80, that ballroom dancing is just walking in a pattern of steps. So it's actually not that difficult to start at any age. Of course, the the earlier you start, the easier it is for you to pick up. When we look at you as a human being, I'm a deeply unattractive man. What's it like being delicious? Oh, stop it. (laughs) Um, I I really don't know how to answer that. (laughs) you You can blame my parents for how I look. It doesn't hurt, though, does it? When it comes down to your popularity and connecting with the public, if you've got a personality and if you're half decent to look at, they do seem to fall for you. And and you did have that connection. It's interesting, isn't it, how on Strictly some people stick out and a lot of people don't. Well, I think it's not all, it's not necessarily all about how you look, but sometimes how you move is far more attractive than actually how you look. And if you go to any club or any, any dance floor anywhere and you see somebody that can actually move well to music, that, that actually is more attractive to most people than actually how they really look. Tell me about being in that bubble of Strictly, because, I mean, we've spoken to so many of the stars over the years on this show, and it always amazes me how for that 12 weeks your life is consumed by it, and suddenly you become megastars, and your every word and your every move is commented on by every journalist. Does it ever become normal? Um, it does eventually. When, when, I, when I first joined Strictly, I was completely overwhelmed with actually how big the show was, and um, Having not lived in this country until I actually joined Strictly, I didn't realise how big it was. And the moment that I was offered the job, and it first went into the newspaper that I was going to be one of the new pros, I found that I was inundated with requests for interviews. People wanted to know where you were doing, what you were eating, have you changed your underwear, all of that. They wanted everything possible they wanted to know about you. Um, and I felt at the beginning it was it was all quite exciting that everybody wanted to know, but then you start to feel almost like your own privacy is completely diminished. Are you okay with that? Because I guess that's the payoff for getting the paycheck from the show and being on primetime BBC One. Well, I, you know what? I think it comes part and parcel with the job and I, I absolutely I embrace everything that comes with it. And um, you know that being on a show like that, that it's going to draw a lot of attention to yourself. But it also is great because of that. It gives you such a huge platform to work from afterwards. Um, and if it wasn't for Strictly, I would never, ever be able to do the things that I'm doing now. And then we look at some of the partners you were given. I mean, it's always amazing, isn't it, when you find yourself in the same room as someone who's famous, whether it be Sarah Cox, Lisa Riley, Alison Hammond. Did you have a favourite? I mean, Alison, to me, would be someone I'd love to stand up as it, just because she's so damn funny. Well, for me, it has to be Lisa Riley. I mean, but... Um, all of my partners are amazing. It's like if you've got kids asking which one's your favourite. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, but myself and Lisa Riley struck up such a huge friendship with one another. Um, um, she took me the furthest I've ever been in the show as well, which was the semi-final. And um, us as a partnership uh, became almost like the nation's sweethearts because uh, Lisa was that big girl that everybody thought was going to be the joke contestant based on her size. Mm. Uh, but then, of course, she came out there. She could dance. And she's inspired an entire nation, especially of larger ladies, to get up and actually have a go at ballroom dancing that never felt that they could. And now, of course, she looks absolutely stunning. She's lost a ton of weight. I think I saw her on Loose Women a couple of weeks ago saying she's going to have some surgery now to remove the skin. There's hope for all of us, isn't there? Absolutely. I mean, Lisa lost a lot of weight during the show, um, which was fantastic. Um, but then afterwards, um, she'd, well, she'd lost her mother a couple of weeks before the series started. So the show was very hard for her. 
And then her father got diagnosed with diabetes and the doctor said, you really need to start changing your habits um, and, and your lifestyle. So first of all, she cut out alcohol, noticed that lots of weight, more weight was coming off. And then she started to get excited by the amount of weight that was coming off. And now she's very into her exercise, eating healthily, and um, she's dropped over half her body weight. And she looks fantastic. I'm really proud of her. I mean, you talked about the help you gave her and she thanks you for giving her confidence. You can't buy that, can you? Giving people confidence. And of course, your life's a lot about that now. We look at your charity work, but firstly about your dance lessons that you give, especially to young people. That's a great blessing, isn't it? To pass on your gift. Well, I spent the last 35 years learning a learning a technique and learning how to dance properly and 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 i've learned a lot of things even just through experience of life over the last 30 odd years and my job now really is to pass that all down to the next generation so that they can then use that and build on that to become even better and and one of the things that we struggle in the uk now is getting a lot of boys involved in ballroom dancing um because there was a time when um it was seen as very daggy, something that your your grandparents did on a Friday afternoon at their social clubs and things. But now, because you've got people like Harry Judd and Lewis Smith and that can that can put on lots of sequins and go on BBC One and uh, at prime time and do it in front of millions, there's a lot of boys now getting interested. So we want to keep those boys there because um, back in the day. Um, ballroom dancing was such a British thing that the best in the world would always be British and we started to lose that because we lost a lot of boys along the way through bullying and things like that Mm. so now we just want to keep those boys interested and get back on those gold spots where we belong I know you've done a lot over the years and you've fought for gay rights and you've been very vocal about standing up for who you are and being you, whether that be a dancer, whether it be a builder, a bricklayer or whatever. Do people still judge today? I mean, we're exactly the same age. I wonder whether people care anymore. No, not really. I mean... They do, but I mean, I've got to say, I've been extremely lucky. I never really had to divulge my sexuality to anybody. I never had to say anything. Um, And I appeared on the front cover of Gay Times after my second year at Strictly. And um, I think everybody had just assumed and it didn't even become a a question. Um, So I've been very lucky in that way. But I do know that there is still a lot of homophobia that goes on. And um, there's still a lot that needs to be done, even in this day and age. It does surprise me. I saw in the papers last weekend there was an attack in Manchester, um, some gay hate crime that was totally unprovoked, totally out of the blue. It amazes me that people would lose so much, would use so much energy in being negative towards somebody else who's minding their own business. It's extraordinary. Well, it's um, it's the same with anything, really. I mean, there's over the years there has been so much progress made with the fact that now that we can get married. Um, and we have the same equal rights as anybody else does in this country. However, um, there's still an awful long way to go. Do you want to get married one day? Is this something you'd love? Oh, listen, like any other person in the world, since I was a, a young girl, I mean a young boy, I dreamt of my um, a day that I could get married. And now it's possible. And, and never say never. I mean... Um, uh, Uh, Who knows when that may be, Uh, but Mm. I definitely would like to get married at some point. I know you've given a lot of your life over to charity uh, right now, which is such a noble thing to do. And one of the interesting charities that you work with is Hearts in Harmony. Tell us about this charity because it's very special to you. Um, They work an awful lot with people um, using the arts for people with um, heart-based problems. And because they use the arts to do this, that's why I got involved obviously uh, with ballroom dancing it's, it's, it's an art and it's something that so many people love and um, as, it's a, quite a new charity um, but it's actually doing very very well at the moment. Um, there have been heart problems in my family and I'm sure everybody's had somebody in their family with a heart problem um, and if we can all get together and raise as much money as possible we can stop these things happening and prolong the life of everybody. What's your life like on a daily basis? Do you have a regime that's strict even at this point? How disciplined are you? Um, I didn't used to be that disciplined as far as diet and things go because I would be dancing for like up to eight, nine hours a day. So it's always keeping you physically fit. Um, but I haven't danced for a couple of months and you do start to notice that the body does start to change very quickly. So I'm back at the gym as I used to be, but I'm back here five times a week for a couple of hours a day. Um, I don't really watch what I eat too much. I, something that I can always get back 
get back into, but what you've got to understand is when you go to the gym and you start to build up muscle, it takes months and months and months, even years to get it to where you want. The thing is, um, I had a back operation a couple of years ago, and I had to take six months off, and in that six months, 10 years of hard work at the gym just all disappeared. So it goes a lot quicker than it does to build up. Yeah. Um, so I try to keep myself as physical and active as, as possible. And um, I'll take my grand, for example, um, who's no longer with us, but um, she was still at nearly 90 years old. She was going to her social dance every weekend and keeping herself active. And that's what kept her going so long. So rather than sit down and give up and think, oh, I'm too old for this, you're never too old. It's just about getting out there and keeping yourself moving and active. I was talking to someone a couple of weeks ago about the pressure of being a young man now. It seems to me there's never been a period in history where men are so focused on. My dad didn't worry about what he looked like. He certainly wasn't being papped by the uh, Daily Mail with his boyfriend on holiday in Barbados. Do you worry about your physicality? Does it bother you that somebody one day will mock you for having man boobs like I've got? Um, absolutely, it does, especially in, in, in today's society. And it's such a shame that everything is based so much on how we look. Um, but of course, when you're on TV or you're in a, such a public profile, you've got to maintain a particular look that you've always had. If, if perhaps I'd never had it when I joined the show, I wouldn't be so worried about it. But because I'm known for being quite big and working out hard at the gym, I have to sustain that all the time. And sometimes it's really hard work. And people do pull you to pieces just because you've got an extra lump or bump appearing somewhere which is really horrible but um, the society that we live in nowadays even with a lot of mo uh, majority of straight men they are so concerned now about how they look and a lot more guys and girls obviously are going to the gym to make sure that they all look a particular way mm. and as for Strictly Come Dancing we talk about the fame of that is there any hope you'd go back would you be interested in that or is it over? Um, I have never say never. I mean, I did five wonderful years on the show. Um, I had wonderful partners. I met so many wonderful people. Um, and I, I think I'd love to do another series at some point, but you never know. Um, I've got lots of things in the pipeline, so it just depends on, on where everything falls, I guess. G game of scheduling, is it, at this point? Yeah, and you know, I'll, I'll always be part of the Strictly family, just like anybody else that's been there. And um, it was nice to be... Um, one of the only British guys on the show at the time. And the, the thing is with that, whenever I walk around the streets now, I'm always stopped saying, we really, really miss you from the show. Um, and I think uh, I find that such an honour that people can remember me even three years on mm. um, and still wish I was still there. And this year is going to be particularly interesting. We had Len Goodman on just a month or so ago. Him going is going to really change the dynamic of that entire show, isn't it? Yeah, Len, do you know what? One of the best people that they've ever, ever had on Strictly, any celebrity, anything, he is one, one of the best people I've ever met on that show. And of course, I knew him from back in the ballroom dancing world. And um, obviously, there will be a replacement coming for him. We're all dying to know who it is. Um, I personally think it will be somebody that's never been on the show before that can bring a brand new dynamic to the judging panel. Um, I think it would need to be somebody that's ideally from the ballroom dancing world rather than theatre or anything else like that so that we have um, somebody that is a, a, an ex-world champion just like Lem was. Yeah, as long as we don't get somebody like Joey Essex or Gemma Collins, I think we'll be fine, don't you? I can't foresee that happening <laughs> in any way, shape or form. I do hope not. Uh, Momondo have announced their Global DNA Journey and Challenge. This competition uh, has been going on. And you were a part of this. And as, as part of the Momondo uh, Global DNA Journey, you found out about yours. Tell us about it. An interesting revelation, really. Well, I, was, I um, did my DNA test uh, and I was expecting it to come back because I have dark features and... Um, most people, if you look at me, you would not say I was English, you did my accent, a lot of people think I'm Australian, but I lived out there for a while. So I was expecting when this came back for me to have um, uh, an ancestry coming from perhaps all over Europe or somebody like, something like that. But no, I came back at about 40% British and 48% Western Europe, so just almost heading into France, that kind of thing, and Irish. So um, it didn't come back as I was expecting it to, so I'm pretty much full blood, bred and born British. Mm. And were you disappointed? Were you hoping for something sexier, or were you happy with that? 
Well, I was hoping for something, you know, for a little bit more exotic, really. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, ta- I'll take my uh, Western Europe, so perhaps there's a little bit of French, Spanish in there somewhere. It would explain my kind of darker features. Mm, I did it. I put my name in and apparently I'm related to Shrek somewhere down the line, which is disappointing, <laughs> Robin. You can find out more by going to mamondo.co.uk. That's M-O-N-O-N-D-O.co.uk. Uh, Robin Windsor, it's really lovely talking to you. Thank you so much and uh, good luck with everything. Keep in touch. And we'd like to see you back on Strictly. You're very good at it and uh, incredibly popular. Good luck with everything. Thank you very much.